Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa Huffman, Liz Somerville, and Haley Adams with the National Weather Service in Corpus Christi. We are going to go ahead and get started with our update on our marine program. Uh, we're going to be basically providing an overview of the program and some exciting changes that are coming our way, as well as touching base on some of the resources that are available to you. Now, if this is your first time joining us with GoToWebinar, everyone is muted. And um, so if you have any questions, please just type them into the question window uh, throughout the duration of the webinar. So you have your control panel there um, and that'll be the way that we can keep track of what's coming in and then we make sure that we answer everyone's questions. Now, this is being recorded and we will be sending this recording out. So if there's anyone in your organization who missed this webinar, they will be getting a copy of it. We'll be sending it out to our partners and you are welcome to forward this out to whoever you need. To make sure that we are properly introducing ourselves though, because it's a little different in this virtual world, just hearing a whole bunch of voices, but not necessarily seeing faces. Um, we have Haley Adams, uh, who is a meteorologist in our office, as well as the Marine Program co-lead. Liz Somerville, who's a senior meteorologist, as well as the Marine Program lead. And myself, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for the office. Again, my name's Melissa Huffman. Um, Haley and Liz are leading our marine program efforts here, both the marine forecasting as well as education and outreach. Now their contact information is shown on this slide. So if you are a mariner or if you have marine interest, these ladies will absolutely help you with anything you need, any kind of questions. Um, they are fantastic resources and I'm really excited uh, for you to get to hear them speak today. Now, again, we've touched base on this already. We'll be talking about our marine program here from the National Weather Service Office in Corpus Christi, talking about some of the changes to our coastal waters forecast. So this will have primary impacts for our major marine users who rely on the coastal waters forecast. Uh, we'll be talking about some marine resources that are available, and then we'll open it up for any kind of questions. However, you are welcome to type in those questions at any point in time throughout the webinar today. Now, I just want to provide an overview for our marine program and our marine service area. Uh, this is where we provide marine forecast services for. So just to acquaint everyone with what we're talking about, I know we've got a lot of folks who live along the coast here. So just to tell them the areas that we're actually specifically forecasting for from the National Weather Service in Corpus Christi, everywhere outlined in red that you see here. So essentially all of the bays stretching from Baffin Bay on up to Matagorda Bay, we forecast for those bays, and then we go out 60 nautical miles from there. So if you added up all of the area for that, that's about 6,500 square miles of water. So not only do we have land responsibilities, but we have marine forecast responsibilities as well. Now, for those of you who are confused, I'm using Matagorda Bay as a reference point. Um, Calhoun County does straddle Matagorda Bay, but the bay forecast itself, that's going to come from the National Weather Service office in Houston. And if you're looking for forecast information for portions of the lower Laguna Madre, that's going to be coming from our sister office out of Brownsville. So if you ever have questions about why a specific area is not included in a coastal waters forecast, email us because chances are we'll be able to point you in the right direction. Now, in terms of the coastal water forecast, I'm gonna toss this over to Haley Adams. So Haley, if you'd like to speak to everybody, you have the floor. So part of what we do here at the Weather Service is issue a coastal waters forecast and this can actually be found on our website. Uh, you'll see the URL at the top weather.gov forward slash CRP forward slash marine, or if you have a NOAA weather radio, the coastal, weather, coastal waters forecast um, is broadcast over the radio. Um, They're updated four times daily, and we monitor, monitor them continuously for changes here at the office. Uh, so when those changes occur, we may update um, more than four times per day. But the coastal waters forecast is issued for areas within 60 nautical miles of the coastline. Go ahead, Melissa. So this is what the coastal waters forecast looks like. At the top, you have the type of forecast, of course, the coastal waters forecast. Um, we have the valid area. 
So the middle, middle Texas coastal waters, and as Melissa mentioned earlier, from Baffin Bay to uh, Matagorda, out to 60 nautical miles. Um, then we have the definition of what we determine to be seas. Um, and then we give a forecast overview. So a synopsis of what we're expecting uh, through the long-term forecast periods, so about a week out. Um, and we'll go into if we're expecting sea fog, how strong the winds are going to be, um, if we expect them to, to increase or decrease, um, and what the seas are going to be like. Go ahead. And further down, we get into specific marine zones. Um, so if you're looking for uh, forecast specific to your area, this goes into a little more detail. Um, and it goes from the, we, uh, when we update them, it can go from the rest of today uh, all the way through our long-term period. All right, this is Liz Somerville talking about the coastal water forecast changes. So we noticed that when we issue a special marine warning, it was unclear where the hazard was. If you look at this slide, you can kind of see where we have a special marine warning for bays and waterways from Baffin Bay to Port Aransas, which is a pretty large area. And it was kind of confusing uh, to know where the hazard was. So we worked to change our zones from, oops, I hit the wrong button there. Um, from, let's see if that's a, let's see. Anyway. Um, from our old two zones where we had the, the zones went from basically Baffin Bay to Port Aransas and then from Port Aransas to pretty much uh, Port O'Connor. And we're gonna change those uh, to be four zones now. Um, now this is only changing for the bays. We are not changing the, the coastal waters out to 60 nautical miles just for the bays so that we can try to be a little bit more clear for our special marine warnings. So the marine zone change that for the southern portion from Baffin Bay to Port Aransas will now be Corpus Christi Bays and Nueces Bays as well as Baffin Bay and the upper Laguna Madre. The northern portion where we had the bays and waterways from Port Aransas to Port O'Connor will now be Copano and Aransas and Redfish Bays and San Antonio Mesquite and Espirito Santo Bays. The timeline for this is looking around March 22nd. Um, we're looking for March 22nd at 3 p.m. However, if the weather doesn't cooperate, uh, the backup date is March 29th. So hopefully we can get these implemented sooner. A few, of, quite a few of our products will be affected. Um, our marine weather messages, special marine warnings, coastal water forecasts will reflect these changes as well. Um, we will notice it and watch county notifications and our hazardous weather outlook. So there are quite a few changes to, to be expected with this um, change in zones. Another thing we'll be doing is the experimental coastal waters forecast. This actually is temporary for now. Um, it's, a, it's an experiment that's gonna last approximately a year. So March, 2023. Uh, we aren't exactly sure on when we're going to begin, but uh, this should provide a bit more detail on the waves, um, giving us not only significant wave height and it, it, we'll get the occasional wave heights, plus a little bit more wave detail, um, height, period, and direction for the wave systems. Um, and this will go out for five forecast periods. Each period is about 12 hours. So an example of this, um, we do have, this one's from Miami, who's already in the, the experiment. You can see that if you look at, uh, even just in the rest of today, we see that it's the winds are, are still noted. And then we have seas with the wave period. Um, and then, that kind of helps us decide what we're needing to do. We can have multiple Cs, so uh, that, you know, we could have some confused Cs, so that's something that uh, will also be reflected. We, again, don't have an implementation date for this, but as soon as we know, we will be sending out emails about it. Um, the format's gonna be the same. The only thing that's gonna change with the coastal waters forecast is that we are gonna have enhanced wave detail. Um, if you are confused about it, if you don't like it, please let us know. Uh, we would love feedback on this so we can kind of change things so that it works best for you guys. Um, Haley, 
if you want to talk about some of the marine resources. Absolutely. You can go ahead to the next one. So for marine resources, we have a Marine Zone Forecast Points webpage, and this has an interactive map where you can uh, get site-specific forecasts every three hours and out to five days. You can zoom in and click anywhere on the map. Um, just keep in mind that there is some forecast uncertainty if you are planning to use this for tropical systems. Um, as well, uh, included with the interactive map, uh, if you scroll down further down the page, you will see a tabular forecast um, it's displayed next to the uh, interactive map on the screen here. And that gives you an hour by hour look at uh, the marine forecast. So wave height, wave period, wind speed, um, what we're expecting for our probability of precipitation, temperatures, wind direction, things like that. And you can find this uh, page at the URL to the right of that tabular forecast. So another resource that we have, we have the Weather Radio, Weather Radio, I can't speak today, Weather Ready Nation Marine Ambassador Program. It's a program of the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, NOAA, and it strengthens partnerships with external organizations, um, building community resilience and uh, helping to decrease the vulnerability to extreme weather and water events. So it was recently launched and it is designed to introduce the marine community to our marine products and services uh, here at the Weather Service. Um, it's also going to be used to share best practices among the marine and coastal community ambassadors. Uh, it's gonna allow for better communication um, of marine related weather service products and services. And we'll work with the organiz organizations to strengthen preparedness, marine resilience, and protect life and safety at sea. All right, uh, one of the big things that you guys all know is that Bob Hall was severely damaged during Hurricane Hannah. Um, the pier is going to be renovated and rebuilt, but our gauge at the end of the pier will have to be taken offline for this. And this could last up to two years. Um, so we've had to come up with a sort of surrogate station that we could use as a replacement. Uh, there, we are using one that is near Port Aransas. Um, everything's fairly close. The information is not uh, too far off. Um, tides are within six to 12 minutes of the pier. Uh, really, winds aren't too far off. So it's really not, um, it's not a bad comparison. So it's as close as we could find. Um, and the station is called Aransas Pass, but it will be referred to as Port Aransas in our products just to kind of minimize the confusion in its location. All right, so that concludes essentially our very brief update on our marine program. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna unmute the lines. So what that will do is that will actually give you audio control if you have any kind of questions for us based on any of the information that's been presented so far. So just to summarize everything, we've talked about changing our coastal waters forecast. So the two zones that we have for our bays, that's gonna be split up into four zones and that's to provide more geographic specificity in our forecast products. We're also going to be implementing an experimental wave height information program for our coastal waters forecast that's going to be just for the first five periods and we really do want feedback on this particularly as we go through hurricane season so any kind of feedback you can email me you can email liz you can email haley good bad and different we want to hear it all the final thing to take away from this because so many people use the bob hall pier tide gauge is to know that that will be out of service at some point in time could be as early as within the next month so just keep that in mind if you have that built into any of your operations. Right now, our recommendation is to use that uh, supplemental tide gauge, uh, the one that we'll be referring to as Port Aransas. But again, going back one slide, um, this ANPT2 site, that's what we will be using as the replacement for Bob Hall Pier in its absence. So I'm gonna unmute the lines. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them at this time. You can type them into the chat box. If you think of anything after the talk, just email us and we'll get you set up. So that being said, we'll just pause for a few moments to see if any questions come in. 